Hello and Happy New Year, and uh, welcome to the Powerhouse Church of God in Christ Sunday School Highlights. I'm Odell Riley, Senior Pastor here with our First Lady, Freedom Riley. Hello and welcome to this week's Sunday School Highlights. Amen. This week we're going to be talking about Call to Proclaim, coming from Luke chapter 4. Yes, I'm excited about starting this new year. I'm excited about studying with you today. Amen. So get your Bibles, get your commentary, get your notebooks, and let's get ready to dig in. Welcome back to this week's Sunday School Highlights. Uh, and this week we're going to be talking about Call to Proclaim. Mm -hmm. But before we dive into that, we want to, uh, I guess, acknowledge that uh, uh, we missed last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it just uh, it was a challenging week. It just kind of, we just kind of ran out of time actually <laughs> trying to get ready for Christmas, primarily for the grandkids, uh, mm -hmm. because we focused primarily on uh, making sure that they had a good time and, and the dust just kind of got what was left over for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think the, uh, I think the focus was uh, investing in that sort of thing mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. So making sure that monies were spent properly. Um, but Christmas, 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 there were, there were a lot of things that were uh, happening last week. You know, you mm -hmm. still had 2020 happening. Amen. You still had mm -hmm. some people who were uh, sick, you know, mm -hmm. some uh, ill, unfortunately. We still had to uh, just just tackle everything. Amen. You know, one of the things you, you mentioned that we did do is, uh, uh, frankly, uh, it's kind of interesting because in the pandemic, uh, with all of the things that were going on, but our focus around our uh, kids and grandkids were about investing as mm -hmm. opposed to spending on things. So it's kind of kind of an interesting uh, dichotomy that you have going on that in 2020 with a pandemic going on, but yet you we're, we're educating and teaching people to invest instead of spending. In fact, uh, as a side note, I, I've encouraged people to say, if you get the stimulus package that's coming, uh, I, I challenge you to invest it versus spending it if you if at all possible, uh, because uh, even though you get the $600, the cost of that, because it's borrowed money and, 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 and our kids and grandkids are going to be having to pay that back. So you might want to consider investing that rather than spending it if you can. All right, so hopefully you had a great Christmas and you're ready to enter this new year. Uh, hopefully with all the sugar and everything that you <laughs> you consumed last week that's causing short-term memory loss, hopefully we're going to shed some of that in the uh, coming consecration. Amen. And in fact, I uh, hope that uh, we can get rid of some of this pandemic fat that uh, I know I've accumulated. I, I got on the scales the other day. I was working on my uh, uh, 2020 wrap up mm -hmm. to do's and preparing for 2021 uh, actions. And, uh, and frankly, two things. One, uh, as I was working on my personal goal, my weight came into my mind so, and I went got on the scale and the scale said, err. And so that was uh, it was kind of eye opening uh, to get err, and then I got off of him, and then got on the scale, and then he gave me the weight. And frankly, I'd rather had the err than, <laughs> than the weight that it showed me. So uh, uh, many of you, I hope that you you're making plans. Uh, hopefully that you wrapped up 2020, and that, and then you made some good strategic uh, strategic plans for 2021. Uh, you know, we don't get to vote whether we stay here or not. The Lord only determines mm -hmm. that. But what we can do is say, Lord, if you allow me to be here, there are some things uh, that some strategic things that, that I need to do or we need to do as a family, as a unit, as a church and as a body to say we need to make some strategic uh, plans and take some actions in case we are still here. All right. In case we are still here. That sounds a little morbid, but in case we're still here. Well, you see, I say you, you got to have both plans. In, in 2020, got, it was a... In case I'm still here. Well, you got to plan both ways. You got to plan to be here and you got to plan to leave. Yeah, so you, yeah, you got to yeah. invest as much in one plan as, as you do the other one because you don't know which one you actually be executing. All right. So for those <laughs> of us who are going on the consecration, this is what I want to encourage us to do. Really consider, really consider uh, what we're doing this year. I know normally or typically we um, just kind of, you know, just kind of forge our way through it, you know, by whatever means necessary. We get through those mm -hmm. 21 or 31 days, whatever we choose, or 40 days. Some do 40. We get through those days, uh, but we're not necessarily trying to take care of our health. Mm -hmm. And this is not about, fasting isn't about abusing your body. Right, right. And I have, I have seen fasting, uh, the season go awry. Mm -hmm. I've seen people uh, get sick mm -hmm. because uh, they're not taking care of themselves. So I encourage us to take supplements, that sort of thing. 
I've seen, I myself have gained weight on a fast, mm -hmm. and that's because I'm not eating what I should be eating. I'm just grabbing things because they're convenient. Uh, just say in the uh, Daniel fast, instead of eating something, uh, maybe vegetables, I may just grab a handful of nuts and mm -hmm. eat those. And those have, a, they carry a lot of calories. Amen. But they're uh, handy. But they're handy. Mm -hmm. They're handy. Uh, I've seen people uh, really with a lot of uh, stomach issues. Mm -hmm. So we need to be mindful during this fast. And sometimes, sometimes we need to um, make other people aware. Because just say like, if I'm here, um, I may have the babies a few hours a day. And if I'm here by myself, then it's a little more difficult. Well, when the babies were younger, I put it that way. It's a little more difficult for me to have to slip off, you know, multiple times to go and manage something mm -hmm. as opposed to other times. Right. So you, sometimes you have to make other people aware, but the benefits are worth it. The benefit is worth your neighbor Amen. being uh, forced to endure you running back and forth to the ladies' room or men's room. Mm -hmm. The benefits are worth it. You know, uh, the other thing that... Uh, wait, 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 wait. I can't stop them right there. <laughs> I can't stop you with that visual. <laughs> but the benefits, the benefits, it does a lot of times help your memory. Clear up those that, that uh, memory issue that you're having. Uh, consuming water, it clears out your body. Mm -hmm. A lot of those toxins, a lot of people will uh, lose weight as a result of it. If, especially if you couple it with some other things. Mm -hmm. You know, exercise and that sort of thing. Uh, it will help your focus, and that's the main thing. It will help your focus whenever you humble yourself before the Lord. Having that connection with God will really strengthen you. Yeah, well, I was going to pick it back. I wasn't going to let you leave them out there but oh, where you left them out. The, well, what I was going to say is the that the, uh, the one of the things that the uh, pandemic has done is, is forced people to uh, probably eat at home more yeah, and yeah, consider yeah. their uh, food other consumption mm -hmm. more so uh, in this season I would encourage you to try to do uh, more vegetables mm -hmm. uh, which which would be a major part of whichever diet you so choose mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you are, are consuming a lot more vegetables and things that's healthier for the right. body reduce the sugar intake or eliminate it, whichever yeah. one that works for you uh, and like you said just those things will improve your health mm -hmm. you know reducing the sugar intake will help mm -hmm. with your memory and help with you know, diabetical type issues mm -hmm. and things of that nature, uh, and then reduce the fat just by eating vegetables and things right. like that. So by the nature of of, of the consecration, uh, you should be healthier coming out right. than you are right. going into right. it. Right. So um, I look forward to that. I look forward to, my body doesn't look forward to it. My flesh is kicking, screaming, and hollering. <laughs> you know, it wants all the whatever it can get before the, the fast, but uh, thank God for uh, the method, thank God, that he's given us a way, mm -hmm. a way to get more connected to him. Amen. Amen. Ah. Okay. So, as we get ready to dive into this week's Sunday School mm -hmm. lesson, we missed last week, uh, which was, um, I was talking about um, call right. to prepare right. the way. So we have, uh, we're moving from Matthew to Luke. Amen. To the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. So you'll see uh, some differences in some of the stories that's been told. And we know that you know, part of the Synoptic Gospels is give us a more complete uh, view of what's going on. So we stopped whenever Jesus was a baby. Mm -hmm. He was two. Mm -hmm. That's where we stopped. Jesus was two. And last week's lesson actually went into where Jesus is now 30. And the reason we know he's 30 is because John, who is uh, there baptizing people, he has gone into ministry. And John, his cousin, is six months older than Jesus. So you have... Um, John, who is baptizing the people, and he's the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, repent. So John, this is what I find interesting about John. We already know that he, his father was a priest, so that put him in the priesthood. So he is a prophet after Elijah. Elijah. Mm -hmm. So you have a priest, a prophet, and you have Jesus, the king. So all three of those offices really are represented here. And then you had, you know, uh, we spoke earlier about Herod, the king, the natural king, but we're talking the spiritual king. All three uh, offices are really represented there. Well, uh, you know, week before last, Jesus was a baby. Last week, we were talking about John the Baptist mm -hmm. preaching. So that means Jesus was 30. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So we picked up last week when he was 30, and, and, and this week is almost right on the heels of the Right, David. right. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is 30. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, John who baptizes Jesus. Mm -hmm. So John has started his ministry. And at the age 30, that was actually the quote-unquote official age Amen. for uh, these 
Jewish men to start their ministries. Mm -hmm. So John is out there and he's doing his thing and he's telling them, repent for the kingdom of heaven Amen. is at hand. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing, repent. And if you were to read Matthew, Matthew continues on with Jesus' ministry, beginning with Jesus' preaching, mm -hmm. repent. Amen. So this is Matthew's perspective mm -hmm. because he's talking to the Jews. Now, Luke is going to tell us the standard, he, what we're measuring ourselves against, the reason we need to repent. So Jesus is going to come along in the book of Luke, and Jesus is going to teach Amen. the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need to repent, because the day, the acceptable day of the Lord That's is it. here. Amen. So I hope that bridges us over from mm -hmm. the two-year-old Jesus. You know, we, we know a little bit about him going <laughs> to the temple when he was 12, but the two-year-old, the 12-year-old, now the grown Jesus, and it's time for him to enter his uh, ministry. Amen. Subject is called to proclaim. Mm -hmm. We're coming from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 22. The lesson is, uh, the lesson aim is that by the end of the lesson, we will evaluate the meaning and significance of Jesus' inaugural sermon in Nazareth. Since the impact of Jesus' pronouncement at Nazareth and align our faith response with Jesus' call and mission. Yes. Um, Aligning our faith. So this season of fasting, and I'm going to talk about fasting quite a bit because this is on our mind. Mm -hmm. This season of fasting, that's what we're trying to do, align ourselves. Amen. We're seeking to understand clearly the will of God for our lives, those things that we're supposed to do, and make that move. Mm -hmm. So repenting and that sort of thing, it's not just being sorry that you've committed something or didn't do what you were supposed to do. Repenting is about a change of the ways, mm -hmm. And, and making a difference. There's some things that we can do, some things it takes the Lord to do in us mm -hmm. so that we can successfully complete it. And we believe that you uh, accomplish these things often through fasting. I mean, you know, as you talk about, mention about repenting, it, it's, it, you know, there's the dimensions of it, right? First, recognizing that there is a point uh, that I'm off track. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the point that they recognize there's a different path, mm -hmm. uh, being godly sorry for the path that I've taken, and then making an adjustment. And this is a great time of of the year yeah. uh, to make those shifts. Uh, and frankly, as you, uh, I don't know if you strategic person or not, tactical, whatever, uh, as you prepare to make notes in terms of your, your, your desires or outcomes mm -hmm. you want in 2021, it should, it should highlight some of those things that we're going to take a different path on things. You know, and you were talking about getting on the scale and weighing yourself. Mm -hmm. So I have reached that, that uh, whatever the number is, I don't know what the number is, but I've reached that place where I used to weigh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to weigh this <laughs> because I'm not getting on the scale anymore. And the reason I don't get on the scale anymore is because I'm not planning to do anything about it. Quite frankly, that's the reason I don't get on the scale anymore. But at the time, I planned to do something about it to measure whether or not I'm moving in the right direction, then I would need to weigh myself or use whatever people use. Sometimes people measure themselves, you know, take the tape mm -hmm. measure, mm -hmm. see if you're losing inches off your waist or whatever. But I have to have a standard. I have to have a standard um, and, and have some sort of path, direction mm -hmm. that I'm headed. Well, I hope when you get on it, the scales don't tell you error. <laughs> <laughs> That's to be seen. I should. Twenty twenty was a year. <laughs> it was a year. Um, life need for today's lessons. People hear conflicting messages and proclam proclamations all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and then it goes on to ask the question. It said, "What message would provide answers to life's deepest problem?" The worshippers at Nazareth listens to Jesus' proclamation of justice and compassion, and were amazed at his gracious words. You know, before we dive into that, I'm, I'm reminded when the, the trip when we took to Israel and we had the opportunity to go to Nazareth. Mm -hmm. and, and when we read it in the Bible, I don't know what people visual of it is in terms of what Nazareth is like. But I was surprised how small yeah. th this city yeah. was as it was defined in Jesus' day. It was an extreme, when I say small, I'm not talking about a town. I'm talking no. about it'd be, it would be small by the definition of a village. I mean, it was a very small geographical Maybe location. Maybe the size of a campus? Maybe. A small campus, Maybe a very small campus. Maybe the size of a campus, maybe? Yeah. So it was very yeah. small. So when it, it just brings to life when you read about it and, in, and you've been able to vis visit it or visualize mm -hmm. it. kind of gives you a different perspective when you hear, right. can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because it was right. just not so much of condemning the people, although that may have been a dimension of it. Mm -hmm. The other thing, it was just so small and... and, and, and uh, uh, 
uninviting? Uh, well, uninvited and probably unappreciated because it just right. it's just it was it wasn't a place that uninviting that, you, that wasn't a good word for yeah, it. It was just more of it's it's not even a, it's like one of those cities you talk about you know you, you if you drive through it going Forgotten. 50 miles an hour you you know you'd miss it if you if you blink kind of a deal it was it was a very small place yeah and what we learned while we were there was that uh, the carpenters carpenters mm -hmm. were often there and they weren't necessarily wood carpenters right. like we think of mm -hmm. because that's what we're yeah. familiar with mm -hmm. you know you start thinking about the different ages the bronze mm -hmm. age the stone age you know you start thinking about the different ages and it gives you some um, some feel for how this really could have been an age where they dealt with stone. Amen. And mm -hmm. at this time, at this point in time, whenever Jesus was there, the carpenters dealt in stone, mm -hmm. and they um, the noise from their vocation is what was very unpleasant to mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. So carpenters, they're alike dwelt in this area. Um, to satisfy their uh, vocation. Well, I mean, that's a very good point because when we were there, uh, in terms of when when you think of carpenters, um, there was hardly no wood or trees in mm -hmm. the geographical area. So mm -hmm. it it really brought it home when you say carpenter. They're not talking about wood. They're talking right. about stone right. carpenters. Right. And I looked up something not long ago that um, that actually had stone carpenters. And things I just never even considered. It, mm -hmm. There were some really nice things, mm -hmm. really nice mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But yes, you, you know, one of these, looking at these conflicting messages, 2020 has really, has really challenged our way that we've thought traditionally. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the, uh, you know, the things that were just kind of brushed, brushed over, I guess I'll say, in theology. Uh, some of the things, the name it and claim it mm -hmm. kind of things, mm -hmm. some of the things um, that we really can't afford to miss, mm -hmm. this year really brought to light, 2020 really brought to light. You know, I was thinking this morning as I was uh, texting with a friend that's in the hospital uh, suffering with COVID, um, that, that was one of the things that text, how was, how was he doing in, in response I got was he's trusting in Jesus. And, uh, and, and it occurred to me after that, the reality is that's all any of us can do. Regardless right. of where we right. are, regardless right. to uh, sick or well, uh, rich or poor, regardless to our state, the only place we really can put our trust is in Jesus. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And we would go back, and this this is a good season to really look to see what the promises say, mm -hmm. what the promises actually say. We know at the end of the day, in everything we're to give thanks, in everything. Sometimes mm -hmm. we don't even understand why we're giving thanks. It's like, oh. Well, thanks for that lick on the head. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, thanks for me being hit by that bus. Well, th sometimes we don't understand why we're giving thanks, but in all things, we really should give thanks. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So when we pick up here, Jesus has just been um, been in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He just come out of the wilderness. He'd been tempted to Satan, uh, and the Bible said that uh, Jesus, you know, gave put the word on him in each one of those temptations. Uh, and the Bible said that Satan left him for a season. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. now we're coming into this, um, into this conversation. So here. just because you pass a test, that doesn't mean that the devil isn't going to mm -hmm. come and try to revisit Amen. you. Amen. You can pass that test, but he'll try to plant seeds in your minds. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. will try to get in, in your emotions. Mm -hmm. He will really try to turn you against God. That's his purpose. That's right. To mm -hmm. turn you against the Lord. Mm -hmm. But we, we have to see... Uh, that the Lord, He is God, and the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. Amen. He really is. And His mercy and do it. Forever. Yes, yes, yes. And Jesus returned into the in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went a fame of Him through all the regions round about. Yeah, can you imagine that? Everybody's talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now this is this is good for some, and it's not so good mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. This is good because look. They haven't really had a prophet. Now, John shows up, mm -hmm. and they people are accepting John uh, as a prophet. They hadn't had a, a live prophet for over 400 years mm -hmm. to speak to them. Now you got John and you got Jesus on the scene. And Jesus uh, is making himself, not making himself known, he's making God known by the works that he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, what, I think one of the differences just, just occurred to me, I'm not sure if it's valid, but one of the differences is that John came um, 
proclaiming mm -hmm. that the Messiah is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, but he he was not as uh, disruptive, if you allow me to use that. He didn't come into the temples. You don't see the recording of him yeah. coming into the temple doing that type of stuff. And so the religious people, they watching John, but they're kind of watching him from afar. So you have to... Um, I think what you're saying is you almost have to go after John, where Jesus is bringing it to you. Yeah, well, he's catching the people on the peripherals. He's, yeah. he's not in the heart of, he's not in the temple. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Jesus, so John brings right. that. He's a right. forerunner, one in the peripherals. Religious people keep got their eyes on him. Eh, we ain't sure about him, but yeah. we're watching him, right? Yeah. And then Jesus comes into the heart of it. I mean, he, he comes uh, by John, mm -hmm. gets, uh, see the connection, and, and, and John clearly states, this is who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus goes into the heart. He goes into the synagogue. So Yeah. I, I guess one of the things, my mind was going back, but yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. My mind was going back to the scriptures say, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, mm -hmm. but the violent take it by force. And here John was a rugged guy, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was not presented the way Jesus yeah. was, you know, as you said. Um, camel's hair and, mm -hmm. and, wild, and yeah, locusts and mm -hmm. wild honey, that kind of, that kind of guy. And he wasn't, he wasn't pulling any punches. You know, he's telling mm -hmm. them that, you know, you brood of vipers who mm -hmm. did. <laughs> but they could, they could label him though. They could mm -hmm. label him as a right. lunatic. They right. could label him as the alert. I mean, they could have right. all these uh, right. d distinguishing characteristics they could use to say, ignore him. Right. Right. And then, you, <laughs> yeah. And you got Jesus this that's telling the word. And as you said, now Jesus' ministry uh, goes longer than John's ministry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He goes longer than John. So he has time to do more damage too, you know. To, and he's in the heart of everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and as I said that, it made me think about uh, Jesus said, greater work shall we do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we're not being disruptive or we're not uh, presenting things the way it should be presented, you know, shame on us. But you have... Uh, you have John who came the way John came. Then you had Jesus who shows up on the scene. And, and the way he's doing it, and the way he's teaching it, he's teaching it as one of authority. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so John right. is saying, I'm doing this, and another one's coming after me. I'm not even worthy to, you Glad know. Your shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus shows up. This is he. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus is like, yeah, I am he. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, 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 of course, we see it right here in this, right mm -hmm. here in this mm -hmm. lesson. Mm -hmm. We might want to take a break here so they get yeah, the break here. Or let them take a break. Oh, you guys get a break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. All right. <laughs>
Hope you enjoyed that break. Um, and so now the 15th verse, mm -hmm. the Bible says that this is about Jesus, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all, or being honored, or being and praised. Now, mm -hmm. now, now the religious people are going to start having some problems already. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. they let him in the synagogue to teach. They're probably okay with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now when he comes in and all of a sudden he's getting praised and being glory and honored by all, now we start having a problem. Houston, we start having a problem. Yeah, yeah. So he brought the 16th. We're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to. And he on. came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And as his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Well, let me go on and read that 19 verse 2. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So this is covering... Everybody. Mm -hmm. That's Isaiah 61, I believe. Um, yeah, he's there to preach mm -hmm. to everybody. He's, it's time. You know, one of the things that when, when, when it picks up in that, uh, uh, we talked about Nazareth and he mm -hmm. came and we understand that it had to be, I think, 10 men, 10 Jewish men for them to start a, mm -hmm. um, a uh, or, synagogue, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, 10 families of 10 mm -hmm. men to start, start a synagogue. And they said they would have a, it would take about nine, I think, to go through a, uh, seven or nine to go through a, a, a religious organization, a religious service. You would have, I think, two would pray or read. Anyway, it was about seven or eight, I think, that would that would fulfill mm -hmm. the duties in a synagogue. Oh, it took okay. ten. To, took ten to be so, there. Right, right. Uh, but Legally. he talked about the uh, the uh, th that. So he went in there and he picked up the uh, uh, the scroll to read. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when, whenever I hear that, I think about him picking up a Bible and read. Mm -hmm. But then when you read the background, you look at it. The scroll was not a Bible. It was not a book like we think of right, in terms right, of a book. Right. It was written on those scrolls, and those things were big and they were heavy. Right. right. And, and I think about whenever I read this, how he read it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I just read it. I just read it, mm -hmm. read it. But how he probably read it and going, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You know, like this, me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he wanted me to preach to God. You know, so I could see him mm -hmm. like, like really speaking with authority. You know, the other thing that was interesting, some of the background said that, that, that the people that was part of that synagogue, those priests, would, would be able to read that and translate it. So they would be, not, it's, it's not just a translation of what the word said, mm -hmm. they'd be able to read it if it was in Hebrew, mm -hmm. and then be able to translate it in Aramaic or whatever right, the language right. was of that time. So you got almost three or four translations going on from the scroll that he's reading. Right, and remember, at Jesus' time, there this the writing is in Greek. Mm -hmm. they, we have the Greek culture. The writing is in Greek. They've been conquered and we're the initial writings were in, in Aramaic and Hebrew in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He's reading from an Old Testament scroll. Mm -hmm. So the Jews, the Jewish boys, learned to read Hebrew mm -hmm. and Aramaic, mm -hmm. although they were in the Greek culture. So to me, it was, so he, he's probably reading it in Hebrew or Aramaic, and he's speaking in a Greek dialect, a language where people could eat, understand it. And then an the explanation would come mm -hmm. after, after that. Mm -hmm. So that's like three translations. That, so it lets you know that uh, when you think about uh, those uh, young men, when they came into synagogue and they got trained, mm -hmm. uh, it was some pretty, uh, pretty heavy duty pretty training. Pretty intense, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Pretty intense. 17 verse, and see the scroll of the prophet was Isaiah handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found a place. So he didn't just pick it up. Sometimes mm -hmm. people give you the impression that he just picked it up right, and started right. reading. Right. But it, it tells you he purpose he found the place mm -hmm. where he's, that means to find something means you had to be looking for it. Mm -hmm. So he, he it wasn't an accident that he read that passage. Right. Right. That was his intent. And I can imagine people trying to figure out, you know, guessing first off, where's he gonna go to? Where's he going to go to? And then trying to figure out what's he trying to say. Now you got this in the backdrop. Remember, mm -hmm. you got John out there saying, 
I'm a forerunner. Right. And then you got then he baptized Jesus and said, here's the one. Right. And now, exactly. he, now, now he comes into the synagogue. And his fame is going abroad. That's right. And on a, now he comes into the synagogue mm -hmm. and he starts reading and then he finds this passage. And, and, and then to consider, this is Luke simply writing Amen. about it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Luke has a purpose. Yeah. Luke is trying to tell how Christianity and how this movement began and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So Luke has a purpose. He has gone all the way back to uh, from the genealogy from Jesus back to Adam himself, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's trying to tell us, really emphasize the Lord being for the entire world. You know, something just, uh, the, the, when he said there, he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me, the 18th verse. Mm -hmm. But if you go back to the 14th verse, mm -hmm. the Bible says, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So that, that spirit is continuing. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so now he's taken from an experience that they that Jesus just had certifying his ministry. Mm -hmm. And in that same spirit, he comes into the synagogue and then go to mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 61. Mm -hmm. The spirit of, a, of the Lord is upon right. me. Right. Right. OK. The uh, 21st. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to go 21st? Mm -hmm. OK. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say, so they're looking at him. Mm -hmm. And then he, he goes on and talks. He began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilling your ears. It <laughs> sounded like you were saying that, but <laughs> this day is fulfilling your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Mm. So it lets you know that um, it was more than just reading. Mm -hmm. it, it, it tells you whether they understood it or not. Mm -hmm. They recognized the spirit of the Lord was really upon him. They recognized that he wasn't just reading. He was reading with power and authority. Right. Yeah. right. And, and went back to, is this Joseph's son? Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, uh, Matthew, he did the genealogy. Mm -hmm. Luke has also done the genealogy. But not a, only is this Joseph's son, this is David's son. Mm -hmm. You know, this is Abraham's son. You know, the lineage. He's following mm -hmm. in the lineage. This is Seth. When you go back to uh, Cain, Abel, and Seth, Seth who picked up the priesthood mm -hmm. from, uh, we know Cain killed Abel, mm -hmm. but they, uh, Adam and Eve had a third son. His name was Seth, mm -hmm. who uh, picked up the priesthood from there. So you have Luke who's actually gone all the way Amen. back mm -hmm. there. So it, it's not enough to just stop it. It's this Joseph's son. Mm -hmm. We're going to have that today. We're going to have that today. Uh, well, that's just, that's just LaFrida. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I'm just LaFrida. It's, and it's okay just being LaFrida. Uh, well, probably most of the time. Anyway, it's okay just being LaFrida. But also, Anointed. there is the anointing mm -hmm. that God mm -hmm. has placed on my life mm -hmm. for certain things, to do right. certain things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's anointing God has placed on your life. Sometimes... Uh, Sometimes people will say uh, Odell, which mm -hmm. is okay, you mm -hmm. know, say Odell. Sometimes people will say Odell, but they're not recognizing the priesthood. Mm -hmm. They're not recognizing the anointing. They're not recognizing uh, all the other things God has placed mm -hmm. in you. So, yes, that's Joseph's son. It's, although that may, people may try to use that in a derogatory right. fashion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. And in fact, if it's, it's, a, it's amazing. But it's, but it's also understandable that the written word could have been written by Isaiah when it was written and then fulfilled here. Yeah. You know, so it's, 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 it's alive mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and it still lives and it lives on now because mm -hmm. he's still mm -hmm. anointed. Mm -hmm. The spirit is still yes. upon people and he's still anointing people to preach yes. the gospel to the poor. Yes. And so sometimes people get caught when they hear poor again they typically go to the thing where they start thinking about resources. Right, right. And, and he's talking beyond that. Right. It could be poor in spirit, poor, poor in a lot of dimensions of your life. They say he's giving you hope regardless of what, what your status is. Right, right. It's, it's something that's, that's broken. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of times, you, you're correct, we do get stuck on that word. And this is a good time for us to study that because what poor person just wants you to preach uh, to, you know, just preach to them. Most poor people in finances are saying they have other needs and mm -hmm. that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So this is 
really poor in spirit mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree. Totally. Agree. So you got a word for you, mm -hmm. regardless to what what what, what aspect, because you could have people uh, from resource standpoint with all kind of resources, exactly. but they still poor in spirit in other exactly. dimensions of their lives. Exactly. And he said he has he, he has sent me to heal. Mm -hmm. The broken hearted. Now, the broken hearted was, was interesting because broken, when you see broken, mm -hmm. um, it, sometimes people think of something that's broken. Uh, it, it's, it's destroyed to the extent that you can't put it back together. Mm -hmm. But here broken means that bruised. It means more bruised than, than destroyed mm -hmm. because he, he can heal it. Right, right. The pastors so need to go back through these scriptures. I think these scriptures moved him up here. <laughs> go, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. You could. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. to preach deliverance to the captive, mm -hmm. to those that, again, people read that, they start thinking about people being locked up, and it mm -hmm. could be them, mm -hmm. but it could mm -hmm. people right. be bound by other things. Right. They captive by, uh, some of them captive by uh, their past, oh. things that's happened to them in their past, things that uh, that they've done in the past, and they're captive by that thing. He says, i got a word to release you from well, all of those things. Pe some people who are captive by, uh, ideology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some people are captive by a fear. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, we remain captive by a lot of things. Sometimes we're we're stuck in a society that works a particular way, and it could be to our advantage. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to change things, as a lot of them didn't want to change things because it would t take away their advantage in a lot mm -hmm. of cases. Well, and and one of the dimensions of of, of this passage here, when talked about captive. It's not just talking about people that recognize that they are captive. It's talking to people that don't know that they're captive right, as right, well. Right, right. So you have some people who um, were in the society who knew, you know, they, they were purchasing their way. They mm -hmm. were making mm -hmm. money. If we look at the religious side, a lot of these people were making re money off religious things. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were just, just doing things. They were trying to make other people live ways that they couldn't even live trying to hold you down with a religion, they wouldn't even live, live in the religion. Amen. But then you had um, those, as you said, you know, whenever Jesus came and he's, he was looking upon him and his heart was broken because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Mm -hmm. just, they were just lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes people are captive, don't know they're captive because they're trying to follow something that isn't the path to life. It, mm -hmm. life. it isn't the, the, the way that leads the direction they're trying to go. Amen. Recovering of the sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. Those that are conscious that they can't see mm -hmm. and those that think they can see. In fact, Jesus' ministry was, was all over that with the religious well, people. Well, how right? do blind people know they're blind? Mm -hmm. Well, if, you, if, you've been, if you've been blind from birth. Right. I can understand if you've seen and you're, you lose your sight. Mm -hmm. But if you've been blind from birth, how do you know you're blind? Well, somebody's probably got to tell you, mm -hmm. because, because then the, the trouble is, how do you explain sight to somebody that's blind? And, and, and what's interesting here, he used the recovering of sight to the mm -hmm. blind. That means that you've been able to see. Mm -hmm. That's recovering. That, that's, not, that's not the ones that were never able to see. Mm -hmm. That means that I'm, I'm, recover means to bring something back, to get something back. Then, so I'm wondering if... Okay, we, and we're not going to go too far here Okay. because we talked about the captives. Mm -hmm. Some people know they're captives, mm -hmm. some people don't know they're captives. So those people who are blind from birth are probably those who, and don't know they're blind, are probably part of the captives. Mm -hmm. But those who are recovering from the blind, they... And they once saw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they were once in a place and they, they shifted to a different place. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. And the religious that's people, sad. religious people, I think many of them, when, he, when he's talking, because if you take this and as he continued his ministry, you see a lot of this unfold when he's uh, giving sight to the blind and religious people are so consumed by the religious aspects of things that they're not trying to uh, recover sight to anybody. Yeah. They want yeah, them to stay, they want the people to stay blind because they keep maintaining their power. When I say that it's uh, even today, so we're, you're speaking of this first century, but even today, even in this 21st century, to have seen, to have experienced God, but to turn our back on God. And it's probably, I mean, people have their reasons. Just say like um, Herod. 
Herrick made a conscious decision to align himself with certain people to remain in power. Mm -hmm. So whenever I think about that, I think about maybe somebody who could have, he could have once seen, but then he was blind. Mm -hmm. And he was blinded by whatever. Then you have some people who go through si certain situations and it's very difficult for them to recover uh, and they may lose their faith mm. because they've gone through something that's difficult. So they mm -hmm. choose to believe in something else. Mm -hmm. And you know, it could be, it could be uh, substance. It could be yeah. alcohol. It could be drugs. It could be, it could be whatever, or just simply uh, putting down religion altogether. And so whenever I see that recovering of sight to the blind, how did we go blind? Mm -hmm. And we do not. And I say it's sad, that is sad. It's Amen. sad to lose something that is real, something that is the way of life to something that's temporal. You know, some things hurt, and some things hurt for a while. Mm. But we want to hold fast to the sight. We want to hold fast to life. We want to hold fast to good because that's where we find eternal life. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're going to set, it, to set at liberty them that are bruised them that are downtrodden, those that are crushed by tragedies, those that have been rejected, those that have been hurt, mm -hmm. harmed mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. physically, to set, set them free from whatever that, that thing was, to mm -hmm. set them free from it. And then be able to declare to pre and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And, and the question is why? Why is Jesus here to do this? Because he is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. He's the only way it can happen. Mm -hmm. God is the only way. God is reconciling man back to himself. Mm -hmm. So you have that breach in the relationship when Adam and Eve sinned. So there's a break in the relationship, and God promised that he would restore. He, was, he would make a way mm -hmm. for restoration. He mm -hmm. promised that. And the only way he could do it was through him, he himself. He himself came to earth in the flesh for this purpose, mm -hmm. for this purpose. And the only way that you could get, you know, there's no remission of sin. This is the, what the Bible says, except by blood. Mm -hmm. The blood is what's needed. The only way there could be blood was for there to be a so, birth. Mm -hmm. So you had to have the birth. Jesus had to come. God had to come in earthly form so he could bleed mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. His blood was the only thing that was powerful enough. His blood was the only thing that could, that could really save us. Mm -hmm. Animal, th there was only so much that that animal sacrifice could Amen. do, only mm -hmm. so much. But it's through God's blood, Jesus Christ, as the sacrifice. Because when you, the animal, the man sacrificed the animal. Mm -hmm. The animal didn't volunteer to be sacrificed. Mm -mm. You know, mm -mm. whereas God. God himself. That's right. God himself. He chose. Yeah, so the whole why he is the Messiah. This this was what makes God the Messiah. Mm -hmm. This is what God said he was going to do it. He's the Savior. He's the Christ, the anointed one to do this. And the other thing that's powerful about it, he said it like you said back in Genesis that mm -hmm. he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. And if he said it. Oh, that look, all those generations, all those years, mm -hmm. he said it and he still came through. Amen. And, and there were times I know it looked like he wasn't coming through. Can you imagine when, when the people were going into captivity, it didn't look like he was going, right. mm -hmm. going to come through. Whenever they were being defeated, mm -hmm. you know, and the wars. Now, now there are some innocent people, Amen. like Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. There are some innocent people whenever this stuff is going on, but yet he had to suffer some of the same things That's right. as the he rest reigned of on the, the just people. and the unjust. Right, right. But Jesus Christ came. He, he did exactly, God did exactly what he said he was going Amen. to do. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And the 20 verse said, and he closed the book. Yeah. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogues were fastened on him. Yeah. You know, as, 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 he, as he did that and as, as he read that, there's so much power in there. Just like we kind of analyzed that uh, with, with, without that dialogue at that point. The people in that synagogue had to feel this. Mm -hmm. They, they mm -hmm. had to feel it was more mm -hmm. than just words. They had yes. to feel that this, uh, there's, there's power in what he's doing here. And he's sending 
serious messages. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just the regular person reading. Mm -hmm. He's reading, again, as we said earlier, he's reading with power, he's reading with authority. Mm -hmm. And it's also cutting them a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, it, they, they feel that from the standpoint of the word is good, but they also feel like he, he you know, he, he, he He's taking swags at us, too. <laughs> you got to know it. You, I mean, you got to know it. It's, you, you know how, you, we know how that is sometimes. Um, sometimes the word comes and it hits us. And, and I've been in a church service and people would say, he's preaching on me. If the Bible hits you, the Bible just <laughs> hits you. If the word hits you, the word just hits you. It's like, okay, so when I go to the doctor, I don't want him to give me somebody else's medicine. <laughs> they don't give me what I need. So why do we get offended whenever we say, oh, you're talking about me. We better get some help. Amen. We better get some help. Amen. But we do have some questions okay. this week, and I'm trying to, okay, I got them here. I got them here. I figure out the question. Uh, we have actually three questions. Okay. And we'll see if we can get all three of these answered in timely fashion. Okay. Uh, why does Jesus go to Nazareth knowing he'd be rejected? Uh, you know, when, when, when you are uh, anointed of God, <clears throat> you go to, you follow his instructions. Mm -hmm. And the instructions, uh, uh, following his instructions is, is not always going to be create a welcoming environment. Mm -hmm. It's just like you just mentioned about if you go to a church service, mm -hmm. somebody said, why are they preaching on me? Well, Okay, did you come to church for the word <laughs> or did you come to church to feel good? So if you came for the word, for that correction, mm -hmm. then it should correct you. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus went back to Nazareth uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One, he was led to go back there. Mm -hmm. That was if, if it was the start of his ministry. And as part of his ministry, he went back mm -hmm. to the foundation mm -hmm. that, that he, by him going back. He was then able to at least create an environment for the people to at least acknowledge he from among us. Right, right. You know, but there's something different about it. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of people been born in Nazareth. And but, they confirmed who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. They confirmed. When you go to, through the lineage, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the son of Joseph, right. mm -hmm. this is not a different Jesus right. coming on the scene. Mm -hmm. And so when, when and, and what it does at that moment, they may have rejected him, but what it did was plant a seed to give them an opportunity mm -hmm. in time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think we've already gone through this one, but I'll ask you, how is Jesus good news for the poor? Yeah, well, we talked about that. Yeah. The, the, the <laughs> poor defined not just in terms of resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's see. What does the year of the Lord's favor look like? Well, if you if you go back, is it goes back to the um, the year of jubilee, mm -hmm. uh, and and jubilee was declared in the fiftieth year, where they would forgive them for their sins. They would uh, they they would they would re, re, uh, uh, forgive them for debt and all. That. But they had the weight on that to be declared, and Jesus was showing demonstrating he had the power, mm -hmm. he had the authority. To declare that, mm -hmm. and, and you didn't have to wait fifty years to get it. So the year of the Lord's favor doesn't look like me getting a new car. Uh, well, uh, that wasn't what he was referring to because they didn't have cars <laughs> back then, right? If you go back, you got to tie all of that back to when he talked about what he come to preach to do. Mm -hmm. And if you tie it back to that, he come to set the captive free, mm -hmm. preached, you know, to, the, to all, all those he outlined he came to preach to. So when he's talking about the acceptable year. It is forgiveness. It is release. It mm -hmm. is. Uh, it's the characteristics of the year of jubilee stuff mm -hmm. that's done more in a spiritual, in a spiritual aspect in, a spiritual. In, in, in our realm today. So it's okay to, uh, it's okay to have things uh, prospering and being in good health. It's okay to have these things, but the most important thing is the spiritual health, spiritual wealth. That's the most important thing. Amen. Having ourselves rooted and grounded. Because uh, as we go through life, as we experience things, we're going to need God. And it's not just simply we're going to need God, but we have others who's, who are going to need God. And we need to be that vessel who can extend the truth to others mm -hmm. as well. We want, we want to be able ourselves and want others to be able to hold fast and live fully with the Lord, no matter what the situation is. Amen. No matter what the circumstance is. Because at the end of the day, all the material stuff's gonna fade away. 
Right. Every right. bit of that is going to go, go by the wayside. Right. And, but that, that, that spiritual peace, the soul, that, that exists, mm -hmm. exists forever. Mm -hmm. and, that, and we need to spend more of our time and energy feeding that and more of our time caring for that mm -hmm. uh, for, our, for our souls. All right. All right. Well, look, um, we, we appreciate you for uh, joining in with us today. Um, we tried to get a lot, squeeze a lot in there. And I apologize for going back over the scriptures again. <laughs> Wait. Some good stuff in that. <laughs> it's, it's quite okay. It's quite okay. Uh, we need to read them again, again, and again. Mm -hmm. It's quite okay. But remember some things whenever you go through your fast. Remember, remember, be mindful. Uh, you know, there's some things that, and, and some may be ready to cut, I don't know. But there are some things whenever we're fasting that we really need to be mindful of when we're, we're already supposed to be six feet away from people. <laughs> but, uh, and future fasting, <laughs> let's remember our hygiene mm. is still important. And I guess it will really be important to you now with that mask on. Yeah. <laughs> remember. It will be, be a constant reminder. <laughs> it will be a constant reminder. Uh, remember your personal hygiene. There have been questions, and I'm going to answer this now. There have been questions of whether or not people can chew gum and use mints and that sort of thing. What I encourage people to do is... Uh, you know, you, 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 we don't want to start chewing that gum because we got a little sugar in there. You get a little kick, kick from it. But uh, you can use a clove. See if that works for you. Uh, just put a clove. Um, I had a actual a dancer friend. A spice friend, clove, right? A spice. Mm -hmm. I had a dancer friend to tell me about that, to put that under your tongue. Now, I catch myself chewing on that thing. You know? So I look like I'm chewing tobacco or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But anyway, if you put that clove under your tongue, that helps mm -hmm. to keep you uh, the saliva moving and keeps your breath a fresher we're brushing you know continue mm -hmm. to brush you know a minimal three times a day you may want to do more make sure you're brushing your tongue and all that sort of thing uh i think it's okay to still use mouthwash mm -hmm. and that sort of thing um it's important you're 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 we don't want you suffering physically Amen. suffering Amen. because you're fasting mm -hmm. You know, you're going to get hungry. And for some of you that are doing the Daniel fast, you will be hungry 21 days. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you still want to take care of your body. Do Amen. not abuse Amen. your bodies. And uh, speaking of that, uh, just from a uh, careful standpoint, please, guys, we are in a very uh, uh, sensitive time with this virus. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though they have the vaccines out, people are getting uh, uh, overconfident. Mm -hmm. They're dropping the guards. This disease is still alive and well. It's still making people sick, and it's still uh, taking people out. So what we want you to do is please be careful. Yes. Continue to wear your mask. Continue to practice safe distancing. Drink plenty of water. Uh, continue to, to take the necessary precautions. Don't let, don't let your guards down. Uh, this is a, it's a, it's a peculiar time because people have hope of a vaccine, and so they get, they, they get a little lax with some of these things. So be careful. Be on your guard. Take care of yourself. Uh, also, like our video. Share our video. Mm -hmm. and, subscribe uh, to us. Yeah, subscribe to our, to our, to our, <laughs> to our channel. Yeah. To our channel. And uh, we pray that uh, you get off to a great new year. Yes, yes. Looking forward to uh, experiencing God. Uh, looking forward to encouraging uh, you, you encouraging me, mm -hmm. you, you encouraging me, Amen. looking forward to it. Yes. And may the blessings of the Lord and the favor of the Lord be upon you as we get to enjoy the acceptable year of the Lord. God bless you.